Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lana, I'm a librarian at the University of Adelaide Library and thank you for joining me today on Ghana land for this webinar. I'd like to acknowledge the Ghana people as the traditional owners of the land from where I am presenting from today and pay my respects to uh, elders past, present and emerging. And please feel free to pop into the chat if you'd like to acknowledge where you're tuning in from also. So welcome to part nine of our weekly series that the library is presenting this semester. Uh, each week of the semester, we look at a different topic designed to give you a bit of an introduction to studying at university, and we do invite you along to the weeks ahead as well. But today we'll be looking at evaluating Gen AI outputs. So we'll look at a quick recap of what Gen AI is, how it generates its outputs, and how these outputs can go a little bit wrong, and how you can sort of begin to evaluate them. Um, so without further ado, let's dive into our content for today. Uh, so first up, let's talk a little bit about what Gen AI is. So Gen AI, or Generative AI, is uh, refers to artificial intelligence systems that can create new content. So this includes text, uh, images, video, code, and loads more. You're probably familiar with some of these models, um, such as ChatGPT, Claude, Microsoft Copilot, or even Perplexity. Um, and they're all trained on huge amounts of data, and they generate human-like responses um, to, to prompts or questions that you give them. If you would like a bit of a deeper dive into the intricacies of Gen AI, I do suggest having a look at our Gen AI Masterclass video series. This takes you into a bit of a the, a deeper dive into those, uh, a bit more of the intricacies of Gen AI. This is available on our library YouTube channel uh, and through our How Do I Guide on Artificial Intelligence as well. Now, how it all actually works is a little bit complex, um, but I think by having a bit of a grasp, a little bit of an understanding, you can sort of start to realise that, you know, things can go wrong. Um, it's not a perfect system. It's not 100% foolproof. It does have some uh, limitations and things to look out for. So there are a few steps involved uh, before you come out with models like ChatGPT or Claude. So first there is the concept of artificial intelligence, and this describes the ability for a computer to do something that we'd normally associate with human intelligence. Next is machine learning. Uh, so this is the process of teaching or educating an AI system with data, um, so it involves feeding a lot of data into this system so it can just start um, discovering patterns uh, and relationships. And the more data you give it, the better it gets at recognising patterns and then being able to make decisions based on new data that it hasn't seen before. Next level from there is uh, called deep learning, and deep learning uses artificial neural networks with many, many different layers and it just allows the system to discover more complex patterns and sort of continuously refine their understanding of language and ability to generate responses. And then you have generative AI or generative artificial intelligence, and this can create new content by learning how to recognize and replicate patterns in data using those deep learning models. And when these deep learning systems are used for language, then they're what we call large language models like your chat GPT or your Claude, and that sits somewhere in that Gen AI bubble. Now, Gen AI has become incredibly popular in a very short amount of time. You're probably due to its relatively high success rate in providing accurate, useful, or very human-like responses. But as I said, it's not 100% foolproof, and it does have some limitations. And these can include uh, the potential for inaccurate or outdated information. So. This could potentially depend on the cutoff date for its knowledge base. So, for example, ChatGPT, when it first came out, had a cutoff date of 2021. I believe it's now up to September 2023. Claude is at April 2024. And Perplexity, which has access to the internet, says it technically doesn't have a cutoff date because it has access to uh, live information. And, you know, where is it sourcing its information from as well? What, what training data has it been given? If it does have internet access, is it grabbing things from Reddit? Is it grabbing things from Facebook? You know, places that doesn't maybe doesn't have the authority to be giving that information. Um, there is a potential for lack of original research or insights when you're getting your answers out of these models. Gen AI relies a bit on probability. So when it generates its responses, it's kind of like you're getting a bit of an average of all the possible responses. So you're not necessarily getting perhaps an exceptional answer or a really original answer. 
Um, there's definitely the possibility of biased outputs. This could be the result of the data that it was trained on. It could also be in response to the prompt that you gave it yourself if that happens to have any bias in there originally. originally. Uh, sometimes it can have the inability to understand context or nuance. So if you ask it something really ambiguous, if it's really vague or unclear, or you're writing in words that could have multiple meanings or different ways to understand it. Sometimes it doesn't read the room very well and it will uh, make assumptions and get a bit confused and give you something else that you weren't quite sort of thinking about. Uh, and then there's also the potential for plagiarism. So it can, though, although they do generate new information, sometimes they can word for word uh, accidentally plagiarise things. So you need to be wary of that possibility as well. Now, there is another crucial concept that you should be aware of when working with AI, and this is referring to AI hallucinations. So AI hallucinations is when the AI generates false information or information that just doesn't make any sense, and it usually does so with very high confidence. This example here has been making the rounds lately. Some people are calling it the strawberry test. Essentially, someone asked ChatGPT, how many R's are there in strawberry? And it wrongly gave the answer two. And then it took quite a few rounds of trying to convince and say, hang on, there are three. And it went, no, no, I don't think so. It's got two. So yeah, this one was quite recent. A colleague of mine recreated this the other day. But when I went and tried it out myself, maybe a day later, it, uh, it didn't work. It came back with the right answer. So they do tend to fix these things quite quickly, learn quite quickly. But as you can see, they do give answers quite confidently. So if you yourself aren't, you know, super knowledgeable, knowledgeable in an area or you're, you're not sure what the correct answer is, this is where you can get tripped up. So you need to be fact checking these things. Okay, so there are a few different ways that AI can hallucinate. Uh, so first up is prompt contradictions. So this is when you get a response that does not match your prompt at all. You get a completely different answer to what you expected. You can also have sentence contradictions. So AI will give you a response maybe made up of a few different sentences. It'll state something in the first sentence. A few sentences later, it'll say something that completely contradicts that first one. You also have factual contradictions. So this is when you get a response that contains false information things that aren't true, but AI thinks that it's true and it presents it as factually correct. Um, and again, usually sounds pretty plausible and is quite confident in those assumptions. There are calculation hallucinations. So large language models in the name aren't always the best at maths. So expect it to make some mistakes if you're asking it maths questions. And then you can also get source contradictions. So this is when the AI makes up the sources for its references. This happens quite often, and usually the sources sound exactly like something we would be interested in reading, so just be wary of this. So there's a few different ways that it can hallucinate there. And there are a few reasons why hallucinations can happen. So this could include insufficient training data. So the AI just might not have enough information on that topic. It's got gaps in its training data, or it might even have contradictions in its training data. Um, inaccurate output for new data. So this is when it's faced with unfamiliar scenarios, new data, and the AI, it just might generate incorrect information because it's just so well attuned to the data that it was trained on that it can't deal with this new stuff. So it just gives out weird and weird and wacky responses there. And then you've got prompts that are maybe not properly encoded. So this is referring to when you, if you type in a prompt, and again, it's a little bit ambiguous, a bit vague, and it could be, it could have multiple meanings. So you could have words that have different meanings, depending how you look at it, it could be encoded in, uh, improperly. And then you're getting, again, weird responses, responses that you weren't expecting. Okay, so before we go into how we can actually looking at our responses and evaluating and different things to look at, there are some things that you could consider before you even start doing your prompting. So we could call this pre-evaluation steps. So first you've got, okay, let's clearly define your assessment requirements. What exactly are you looking for in this Gen AI output that you're hoping to get? And how does this align to your goals, whatever you were trying to do? 
You want to understand the specific AI tools, capabilities, and limitations. So different AI models have different strengths and weaknesses. You yourself, as you begin to use them more and more, you'll probably have your favorites, ones that are your go-to and that you feel comfortable with using and you know their limits, you know what they're good at. And under this as well is being aware of the knowledge cutoff date. So if you're asking something that's a bit more recent and their cutoff date is quite far back, then you should, you should be aware that it's just not going to be able to give the answer that you're after. And then consider the context of your query. So again, about being vague or unclear, how specific or open-ended is your prompt? What background information might the AI be missing? So what information do you need to provide? So this is all about giving context to your prompt so you can try and get a better output for your prompt. So if you're sort of looking at these steps before you start working with your prompts, you might have hopefully a little bit more realistic expectations with what you're going to get and be able to evaluate from there. Okay, so let's have a look at a bit of a framework that you could use when you're evaluating your Gen AI outputs. We'll be using a framework that specifically addresses AI-generated AI content. You could use the CRAP model, which we looked at last week in last week's webinar. But this framework that I'm going to go through is, is quite similar, um, but it is just a lot more specific to AI outputs. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a fun acronym like CRAP, but there are six different things that we can be looking at when evaluating our outputs. So first up, we have accuracy, relevance, coherence, coherence and structure, uh, originality, depth or depth of analysis, and then citations and referencing that sort of thing. So accuracy, first up, is about fact-checking key points. So you want to be identifying any central claims or statements that have been made in your AI-generated content, and you want to be using reputable sources to verify these claims. And definitely pay attention to anything uh, numerical, any dates, or anything really specific that it's, it's claimed, and make sure you're fact-checking those. Similar sort of vein, you want to be cross-referencing with reliable sources. So multiple trusted sources, look for consensus among experts in the field and not just accepting at face value what AI is generating and giving you. And again, under accuracy is looking at identifying any biases or discrimination that is appearing in those outputs. So here you want to look for language or content that might reflect societal biases. Check if certain groups or perspectives are not fairly represented or left out altogether. And then consider how those biases might affect the accuracy and fairness of the information that you're being given. And just being aware that if there are biases in the training data, it can amplify those or reinforce those in the outputs that it's given. Okay, then we have relevance. So this is about assessing if your content addresses your prompt. You know, have a look at your original requirements. What were you after? Check if all parts of your question have actually been answered. If not, you need to go back, re-elect your prompt, try again. Identify if there's any off-topic or tangential information. Um, is there anything that's unrelated to the topic? Why is it there? Does it add any value or is it distracting from your current prompt? Uh, your goals so that you can address those there and get it to rework its response. So they're looking at coherence, coherence and structure. So evaluating the logical flow and organisation. Have the ideas been presented in a logical sequence? Does it make sense? Um, is there clear transitions between paragraphs and, and sections? Then we want to be checking for consistent argumentation. So make sure it hasn't been contradicting itself in different sections. Look for the main argument. Has it been consistent throughout that? And is it supporting that same idea? Okay, then looking at originality. So here is identifying any potential plagiarism. So if there's any, any quotes, has it been sourced correctly? Has it not sourced it at all? So you can use plagiarism tools to check for copying word for word sort of thing. And yeah, just be aware that it can accidentally plagiarise things word for word. So don't, don't accept it as all completely original. 
Okay, and then you want to assess uh, any creative elements and unique insights. You know, has it given you something new? Has it given you something novel? You know, and has it given you something useful? Are you looking for something that's new or novel? If not, you maybe need to rework it again a little bit more. Okay, so depth. So this is looking at the depth of analysis if you're getting it to analyze something. So you want to look for superficial versus in-depth treatment of topics. Has the, the response gone beyond surface level? Has it really given you that in-depth response that you're looking for? Is there any presence of detailed examples or is it just kind of giving you a really just vague overview of things? And then just, yeah, evaluating the presence of critical thinking. So look for different perspectives. Is there any counter arguments in there or is it really biased and only giving you a pro argument? It's not giving you a con, for example. Okay. And then finally is looking at citation. So you want to be verifying the existence and accuracy of sources. If it's cited any sources, do those sources actually exist? Usually it's a bit of a waste of time. If you are asking for sources or to give you sources, you're better off asking it for a search strategy. Um, follow those steps that we went through in an earlier uh, webinar about Gen AI powered search strategies, um, because most of the time when you do ask it to find you specific articles, it just makes them up. They might have a real author, but the article itself doesn't exist, but it usually does, again, sound exactly like something you would like to read. Um, so try not to get too sucked into doing this. You might have a little bit better luck with perplexity, given that it does have access to the internet. But again, you need to check where it's getting, getting those sources from. Is it from reputable websites or not? And also in this uh, vein, as I mentioned earlier, but just verifying that quotes are accurate. Are they in context? Have they been sourced to the correct author? And then checking for proper attribu attribution. So has everything been attributed that is non-original or has it just ignored those original authors? And again, just being aware that it can make, make these up for checking on that. Okay, so that was a run through on those six different points that you could be looking at. Um, again, you can go back over this at any time um, to look at those points in the recording as you go, if you need a little reminder when you're using this in your work. Okay, so we've had a little look about the different things you can be looking at when you want to evaluate. And I have mentioned quite a lot that you need to be checking. You need to be checking if this is correct. You need to be checking if this author is real, et cetera. So there's a few different ways that you can go about verifying or fact-checking these responses, making sure it's, yep, that sounds plausible, that sounds correct. So first up, you could be cross-referencing with academic sources. So this is looking at your textbook, looking at your course readings, or looking at scholarly articles, scholarly literature and that. So you could be looking in subject-specific databases, so using the library databases in the, in the area of study that you're looking at, and again, just cross-checking and verifying to see if you can find the information in there as well. You could have a look at official authoritative websites, so for things like on current events or grey literature sort of stuff, you can go have a look at authoritative websites there to see if you can verify the information there. You could always ask your instructor, your lecturer, your tutors, see if what you've come out with makes sense to them. And then you can also go and use some fact-checking websites. So things like Snopes or factcheck.org, you can have a look in there and see if it's been verified in there or not or been explained in there. Okay, so I want to emphasise that verifying facts in outputs is a very Crucial step, especially if you're going to be using any of this in academic work, you just need to be making sure that you're checking, you're being critical, you're analysing and evaluating everything that you're getting out of this, not just taking it as face value. So I'll leave you with some final ethical considerations for today. So when you're using Gen, I, Gen AI, just some things to be thinking about. So if you are going to be using it in your work, make sure that you are acknowledging that you've used it in your work. Uh, we do have... Uh, you know, how do I guide on artificial intelligence? How to do this if you need some help there. 
Okay, talking about academic integrity, make sure that you are actually allowed to use AI and how are you allowed to use it? What what does your lecturer say? Go by them. Don't just assume that it's okay to use it. Um, be aware of over-reliance. Don't let it replace your own critical thinking, your own analysis. These are very essential skills going forward that you need to have for yourself. So don't be over-reliant. Don't get lazy sort of thing. You yourself, you, you need to have the understanding so that you can use this tool supposed to further um, to get you get you more. Again, I've stated this a few times, but just always having aware of bias. Be be aware that there is the potential bias in in outputs that are generated there. And then lastly, as always, don't put any personal or sensitive information into Gen AI tools. Just protect yourself there. Okay. Uh, so that's all we have for this webinar. Uh, so we went over uh, a very brief recap of what Gen AI is, how it works, different limitations that it has, um, hallucinations, different types of hallucinations, why hallucinations happen, some pre-evaluation steps you can take before you go and put your prompt in, and then those six different things, a bit of a checklist that you can refer to when you're evaluating those outputs. And then a few different methods for verifying, you know, checking with academic sources, checking fact-checking websites, that sort of thing. And then just some last things to always remember when using AI in this evolving space. Now, we do have a two-week break, but then we will be back after the mid-semester break with a recap or a repeat of our referencing essentials. So we're getting to that time where assignments are due and referencing is probably creeping up. So if you do have any questions that you want to ask live, feel free to come along to those. Otherwise, we do have four more sessions left to go. Again, I always say if you don't have any questions in the session, please do not hesitate to reach out to the library and ask. We're always available and happy to chat, to help. If you head to the library website, we do have a live chat button. You could also email. You could call. If you're on campus, you can pop in and see one of us, and we are happy to help. So thank you for joining me today and hope to see you for a future session. Thanks, everyone. Bye.